Hey guys, and welcome to another MDO Compositions tutorial. Now, this is the 12th part in the Appetizer series, and we are going to make just a few final adjustments before going into the compositor, and then we will start well compositing. So let's open up the file we worked on last time. So this is our compository so far. Now let's go to 3D view. And I need to make one important adjustment, okay? Right now, for example, we can say, okay, I want to move this glass a little bit, and I want to move this table a little bit, okay? The problem is, on the other scene, those adjustments are not made, okay? Control set. Okay, here we go. Now you can see they are once again identical. Now we need to make it so that those changes are also applied to the other scene. And the problem is we cannot parent them so easily, okay? We could probably create an empty and parent that to the empty and then the other thing to that other empty and that's just a weird mess. What we can do what's much easier, and it's also something we did not yet talk about either in the first steps in preparation series or in this one, so it's something new, but it's really not, not that hard, um, and that are constraints. Okay, so let's go to our second scene. Let's select our glass. Let's go to this panel here, which says Object Constraints, and let's add a copy location, okay? So this constraint just copies the location of another object. In our case, uh, by the way, I really should have named those um, objects. Let's just do that. Let's name this one glass underline water and this one wine glass. Okay. And that one table. Table. Okay. Now let's just go back to scene point zero zero one. You could also call that. Yeah, doesn't matter. That's okay. Um, and now let's just make sure that this circle 10 is parented to glass of water, okay? Copy location, leave everything else as it is. Now you can see you can no longer move that, okay? Because its location is now dependent on the other glass. Same goes for divine glass. Um, copy location, glass, wine glass, okay? Once again, you can no longer move it. And whenever... Um, you do that and the object stays in place. That's a sign that you you chose the right object. Because if we choose another object, for example, this one, you could see it would disappear to over there because that's where the camera is. So let's go back to wine glass. Okay. Also for the table, of course. Um, copy location. Table. Okay. And also for the camera because we want to move the camera um, as well, probably. Add concern, copy location camera. It's the first camera. I wanted to type in a C, but A worked as well. Okay. Now, the next thing you want to do, you want to delete this camera. We don't need this camera anymore. And you have to delete that on both scenes separately. Okay. And finally, um, this might be unnecessary because we're not going to move the lights probably, but maybe we want, and then it's important that we have this set up as well. So, select this lamp in a regular scene you can see this is called lamp this one is called lamp 2 and this is lamp 1 okay lamp lamp 1 lamp put lamp 2 so let's go to our other scene copy locate copy location actually lamp 2 copy location lamp 1 and copy location, lamp, lamp. Okay, now that's quite nice. Now if we can no longer move those. Problem is, chances are we also want to rotate um, the lamps, okay? So we also need to set up a rotation constraint. Let's once again set this one, copy rotation, 002, and we choose the lamp. This one, copy location, one, lamp one, and over here, copy location, rotation, lamp. Okay. So now, whenever we make an adjustment on the other layer, it will automatically be copied over here. You can see you can no longer move or them in any way. Those objects that do not have a rotation constraint, they can still be rotated, okay? But the lamps, not. Now, we might also want to set up the rotation constraints for those um Actually, let's do that. I mean, it's not, we won't need it. We need it for the camera, by the way. We need a rotation constraint for the camera, of course. Camera. But we don't really need it for the table or for the glasses. But let's set it up anyway, because maybe we forget about it and then we get weird issues. So 
wine glass, glass water, and table. Okay, and now we can no longer rotate them in any way. They are only controlled by this other scene. Okay, now we can work on this one completely carefree. What I want to do, I want to use, take this table, move it towards me a little bit, like just about there. And then I want to move this camera up slightly to just about there. So I like this view much more. Now let's just save this so far. And now we need to set up the um, pimento mask. Okay, we want to, as you can, as you might remember, the pimento is not quite red enough right now. Um, so we want to change it in the compositor. So we select it, we go to material and because we could also use a um, object index again but there are several pimentos okay and i don't want to set up um, a different object index for each one of them so we can just use a material index because they all have the same material go to material go down in the list and go to options pass index 2 okay now we have the table with the object index 1 and now we have the pimento with the material index 2. You could also go with material index 1 because it's material and object, it's not the same, but uh, it's easier to work with different numbers in my opinion, so let's go with pass index 2. Oh, and I forgot to start the uh, screencast keys again. Okay, I hope you, it wasn't uh, such a big deal. Now, um, yeah, we are good to go. Control S to save and now let's just make sure that our other scene is the same. You can see how everything moved along nicely. And yeah, Control S, make sure both layers are selected. Over here as well. And then I think we are good to go. What exactly is on there? Oh, okay, the lamps are over there as well. We might actually, yeah, let's just leave it this way. Let's just leave it this way. Okay, everything. Okay, Control S, then F12, and I will pause the recording. Oh, one thing I forgot. Uh, just break the operation here. We also need to make sure that on this render layer we ch uh, check material index because now we do not only have object in the index indices but also material indices. Okay, so once again, F12, and I'll pause the recording. Okay, so it finished rendering <clears throat> after nine point, well, nine minutes and fifty-two seconds, which is a bit long, but since it's a still image, it's okay. So and now about the compositing. Um, let me just regroup it a little bit. So um, essentially, this thing here is our new output image. Okay, let me just move that to over here. Uh, this might look a bit weird, but it's just to clarify that like this actually. This is our new image output, okay? So we can completely ignore the old Im image output. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to sharpen the image a little bit, okay? Um, you can find the sharpen node under the filter nodes um, filter, and then just set that to sharpen. Now this is a bit too much as you might have expected. So we're going with a factor of maybe, let me see, 0 0.06 maybe. Then you can just with M you can just mute it to see the difference. And that doesn't even look too bad. It's good to look at the front here. Yeah, this definitely needs a little bit of 0 0.1 maybe. Yeah, this doesn't even look too bad. Okay, I'm gonna sharpen it with 0 0.1. And then the next thing is the depth of field. Now, um, we forgot to set up the um, the distance in the 3D viewport, but I'm actually quite sure you can do it afterwards as well. So let's just um, put in a filter, defocus. Okay, this is just to give it some depth of field. This is the image, and then we also need to see pause. Okay, you can see right now everything will be blurred as soon as we exactly because. Um, the um, the point of focus is too close to the camera. We can see that in just a second. But for um, direct, yeah, let's just uh, adjust that first. Let me just see if it even works. Um, 3D view. Otherwise, we'll have to re-render this. But let me just try something over here. 
uh, let's go with about five for now. I think five would be okay. Distance over here in the select the camera, camera properties, distance to five. That is not enough. Um, let's go with 10. Let's go back a little bit to just about there, I think should be all right. Somewhere around there. Okay. So now let's just try to refresh that in a way. <laughs> Use C buffer. And um, then you have to buff, uh, let's go with 80 for now. And you can see it actually works. You can see you can interactively um, change the distance. Yeah, and you can see this works fairly well. Okay, now we I'll set that back to to uh, eight point seven or whatever it was. Okay, and the blur. Let's leave that. Let's go back down to fifty. And you can see this doesn't look even too bad. Although, um, let me just hide that for now. You can also see it's a bit. The glass is a bit too blurred in my opinion. So let's just set that to a, something a bit higher. Um, yeah, I think this is all right. Um, okay, so make sure it's no longer preview because preview is always lower quality. And um, make it a bit bigger. By the way, you can by the way you can zoom in and out with V and Alt V on your keyboard. V for zooming out and Alt V for zooming in. And this looks fairly cool, actually. Uh, I like that. Um, okay, so. One thing we could try, sometimes it looks quite nice if we look, if we take something else than, um, than circular, for example, pentagonal. And then just, yeah, but you can't really see the difference here so well. Actually, let's go with a pentagonal. That looks quite cool. Okay, pentagonal. Um, here you can also adjust more blur, less blur, max blur, a threshold, and so on. We can leave all those things as they are because right now it looks quite the way I want it to look. And um, yeah, so let's move on to the next thing we are going to do. The next thing is um, a vignette, okay? Um, a vignette is kind of like a standard thing that you, or at least that I add to most scenes. But you just need to make sure it's subtle, okay? If it's too overpowering, then it just looks cheap and over like an overused effect, okay? So first, the way we do an, uh, create a vignette, you need um, an image that is white in the middle and kind of black towards the outer regions, okay? So we do that with a lens distortion. This is a technique I think that Mike Pan showed initially. Not sure if you know Mike Pan. Um, he's a great Blender artist. He also created the very famous BMW. But uh, anyway, you do that by using a distort lens distortion, like this, okay? And then you just plug in any image in here, really. It just needs to have the same format as the final image. So in our case, we can just take this image, doesn't really matter. Then just set distort all the way up to one, okay? And you can see this is our output. And now let's just add in um, a math node, converter math and go to greater than zero, greater than zero. Okay, now everything that is zero is black and everything that's just greater than zero, no matter how, how little the difference is immediately white, okay? So that's what we get here. Next thing we're going to add is a blur node, filter blur. Set this to fast Gaussian or fast Gaussian actually, it's supposed to be Gaussian, I guess. Um, check relative, Y and set this to 20 and 20. And here we have our vignette. Now we can add the vignette to the final image in different ways. The way I like to do it is to use a color mix node. Add that on top, set that to multiply. And instead of just multiplying that over the final image, which, which would look like this. Okay, we're just going to use it as a factor, okay. problem now is that it's the, the wrong way around, okay? So the next thing we do, we're going to add in a um, invert node, color invert. 
And now it's white in the middle, uh, to, towards the other regions and black in the middle. And now this way it actually, actually works again with what we have over here. But now we do not have too much control over how the vignette is going to look, okay? So right now if we... By the way, at the vignette I want to make it a dark blue, not quite black. I want to make it a really dark blue. Something like that. But I don't really like the way this looks right now, okay? So, um... Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add... We're going to add an add node. We can just duplicate that. Set this to add. And set it to about 0.6. And that just makes it brighter all uh, in total, okay? And then we're going to use a brightness contrast node. And I'm just copying the, the values I, I used in the pre, in the original scene, so I don't mess up too much, but I think we have to adjust them later on, because um, here I set the brightness to 25 and the contrast to 15, okay? So this is the vignette. You can see it's quite a subtle effect, but it gives us this great um, blown-out background thing, and I like that. But it's probably a bit too bright. Um, let's just continue with the rest of the scene, and if in the end it's still too bright, then we can adjust it, okay? So yeah, now we are here. Cool. Next thing would be, in my opinion, a color balance node, okay? Color balance. Right there. Now with the color balance node, you can actually manipulate the colors, okay? Lift, gamma, and gain. There's another one, this is uh, offset power and slope, but I usually use lift, gamma, and gain. Now lift um, changes the color and the brightness of the dark tones. Gamma of the mid-tones, so to say, and gain of the bright tones, okay? The bright uh, values. So, um, we are going to change it as follows. We are going to... I'm just going to copy the hex code. So, for the lift colors, we're going to use this one. We can still adjust it in a, just in a second. You can see everything becomes much darker. It looks much... It looks weird, but in a way quite cool. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to adjust the mid colors, and that would look like this. Like this, you can see it becomes a bit more reddish. And now we're going to um, counter that effect basically with our um, with our bright tones, okay? Like this. Um, give me just a second here. I think I copied the wrong code for the midtones. Let me just see. Anyway, let's just make that a bit, bit darker there. And the thing can actually leave that as it is, I guess. Make it a bit brighter though. It, the whole scene becomes a bit too dark in my opinion. Um, yeah, so this is um, the result here for now. We, ch we can change that later on. Next thing we're going to do, we are going to um, only manipulate the pimentos uh, separately, okay? And uh, that was a mistake. Uh, oh. Here we go. And the way we do that now is by using those uh, material indi indices, okay? Okay, so let's add in a mix node, okay? And now let's just... Um, use a um, converter on ID mask, okay? Let's plug in this index, material index over here. Let's set this to smooth mask. You can see this is our mask. Um, we just need to set this to two because our pimentos are supposed to be on this layer, exactly. Uh, next thing is we use that as a factor to mix that together. And you can see it looks like this for now. So obviously, we don't want to mix in white, okay? What we want to mix in is we want to mix in um, this image, like this. But we want to manipulate this image, okay? So we're going to use, go with a RGB curve, first of all. The only thing we're going to do on this RGB curve is actually um, we're going to change the black level, okay? To this. To a slight uh, grayish color, okay? And um, now you can see it looks a bit brighter, I believe, or even darker. It's more or less, it's a bit 
bit dark as you can see. And the next thing is a hue saturation value node. I'm gonna drop in there. And now about the settings for this node. We're just going to change the hue to 0.505 um, or actually to 0.51. So you can see everything becomes a bit more orangish. To the value, we're going to change that to 1.2 and the saturation to 0.94. Okay. And now you can see our pimentos or our pits are. They look a bit, uh, let me see, a bit nicer. Look, they are, in my opinion, not quite orange enough. So let's just also with the RGB curve bring up the red a little bit like this, not too much. And now you can see this is indeed better than the original. Okay. So you can play around with those options. Um, What's also good is to um, change something and then to wait a couple hours or days and then to look at it again because usually um, you, you perceive it completely differently after some time. Um, okay, so that's it for that as well. Um, and yeah, all in all, it doesn't look too bad. It's just all, it's all a bit too dark, okay, in my opinion. And that is partly because of this uh, color balance node, okay? And... Um, the way we can change that is we can, first of all, make sure that this the dark ones aren't that dark because you can see this makes a drastic change already. Um, and then also the height tones are a bit too strong sometimes, I believe. Okay, this looks a bit more realistic. A bit higher, brighter. Yeah, you can see it's, it's a first final product. It, it needs refinement. I think I like my other um, images that I created beforehand better because I, I spent a bit more time on perfecting those. But that is now basically up to you. Uh, you can change the color theme, you can do all sorts of things, you can go with a different different table that it sits on. I If you saw my white version, it's just um, a white material with a, a bit of reflectivity to create that. You can do so many things. And this is just one example. And yeah, so this is basically it for this tutorial series. You can see we did quite a bit of compositing. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Especially if you were a beginner, I hope I was able to get you to like Blender. It's an amazing uh, application. You can do so many things with it. And yeah, by all means, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a lot. And thank you for watching.